I failed through my life. I'm not even kidding. Failed to get the school I want to get in after ten. I failed to get the college that I want when I passed twelve. Right, and all of them by a margin. But like this margin, it has been the case always in my life. This is the first time I'm talking about these things, and I haven't even shared it with my community. I'm like, oh. तुम्हारे साथ कर लेता हूँ तुम्हारी ऑडियंस को पता होना चाहिए सब बातें मेरे बारे में Hi everyone, welcome to Chalchitra Talks. My name is Vani here, and this is another of our guest episodes. In this episode, Disha and I had the opportunity to sit down with Vishnu Kaushik, and we spoke to him about his creator journey, his favorite books, movies, music, inspirations, and so much more. If you're new to the channel, uh, we are a recommendation-based platform, and we talk about movies, music, books, podcasts, poetry. everything that we're passionate about we're about to hit 100k subscribers so do support us by subscribing to the channel and sharing this video and now without wasting further time let's just jump right in hi vishnu welcome to chalchitra talks hello so good to be here excited for the conversation same here i'll just jump right in and i want to know what are you reading right now some reading this book called the miracle of mindfulness i still don't okay. know how to pronounce the author's name it's called tich nat han it was recommended to me by one of my favorite people and the smartest people i know deepak primola who also has a book by the way it's called 50 toughest questions of life it's okay. a great book so yeah that's what i'm reading right now nice and do you usually tend to read more spiritual books yeah all my life i haven't <laughs> been a reader okay okay so mm-hmm. i really had to for, for most of my life i had to sit and read So one thing that I do to help me read easily is I do a fiction साथ में because that's like you know interesting. I love stories. I tell right. stories as a part of my living. So it's just easier for me. So I pick up Harry Potter. But I also love learning about new ideas, new perspectives. So which is why I pick up literally every anything or anything. Previously, I was reading free economics, which is more about economics and social behavior and right. stuff like that. Yeah. So I just keep picking up things that I find interesting and ideas that I find interesting. So I don't. Necessarily pick from a genre. There are things that I haven't ever read. For example, romantic novels or <laughs> horror novels. Okay. So, and what would be your uh, three best recommendations for people who just want to get into reading? Harry Potter. Harry Potter is the perfect segue because one, people have seen the movie. Most people have seen the movie. Two, mm-hmm. it's so well written. It is so easily understandable, mm-hmm. digestible. There's this book called Tuesdays with Mori. I think that is one of the books that lies in the beautiful intersection of stories plus philosophy plus you know just having this nice perspective to life. Then this uh, this book called uh, Anxious People, which is another one of my favorites. Those would be my top three recommendations. The next series that I want to read is Game of Thrones. Ki I really want to read it because every fan that I've met Game of Thrones ka wo yehi kehte hain, "Bhai, tumne jo dekha hai, that is nothing. The detailing that there is in the books is crazy." On that It's note, just... do you like uh, tend to like book to movie adaptations? Book to movie adaptation is never a book to movie adaptation. It's someone else's version of what that book means to them, and then it being translated by the director, the screenwriter, the like a ton of people, right? If it's a great storyteller, the whoever is the director, if it's a great uh, director, they'll be able to tell you that story in a way that you wouldn't feel it in the book. Yeah. So it's a it's a weird trade off, in my opinion. What are the most recent movies that you've seen? Yeah, the last movie you watched that impacted you a lot. <laughs> I watched Welcome recently. <laughs> <laughs> so me and my girlfriend, we were just. हैंगिंग आउट एंड हम ना स्क्रोल कर रहे थे कि क्या देखना क्या देखना कुछ समझ नहीं आता तो हमने वेलकम चला ली बट उससे पहले वी वो वॉचिंग दिस डॉक्यूमेंट्री एक्चुअली इट्स कॉल्ड मेकिंग ऑफ अ मर्डर आई लव वॉचिंग ट्रू क्राइम डॉक्यूमेंट्रीज कॉन्टेक्स ठीक है मुझे ना डर नहीं लगता नॉट बींग कूल ओके मुझे डर नहीं लगता हॉर मूवीज में ठीक है मुझे नहीं लगता इज जस्ट मुझे लगता है दिस इज जस्ट नॉट रियल राइट सो यू डोंट फील अफ रियल बट दैट मूवी लिटरली लिटरली शुक मी बिकॉज आई वॉज लाइक दिस एक्चुअली हैपन एंड आई लाइक ओ माई गॉड हाउ on earth is this possible so that's one movie that chuck me oh one show recommendation i have is mind hunter i love mm. that show for people who like serial killers it's a great show or not like serial killer <laughs> uh people for people who are interested, interested in yeah. instead of movie recommendation i can get give a lot of tv show recommendations yeah, i can give a lot of shows recommendation yeah so in terms of comedy 
right yeah. if you like dark comedy if you like you know comedy that's very edgy very risky if you watch it's always sunny in philadelphia then you should watch trailer park boys it's on netflix it's a mockumentary style of uh, a yeah. shooting if you like the office you're probably going to like trailer park boys then yeah. this show called community that's also a great show for comedy for people who just genuinely like appreciate good comedy when i say good comedy not that you know that gets the most laughs but like the jokes are so smartly written the characters are written in a way that you know there is depth to the character you see what the kind the writer is trying to do there so i think that's a interesting these these shows and uh, what about music and podcasts do you listen to a lot of podcasts as well i come from a science background so i love anything and everything that has to do with any field in uh, field of science there's one podcast called huberman's lab podcast and rehuberman is a neuroscientist and he tries to break down different parts of your life from you know uh, anxiety depression to things like uh, how, how to increase focus how to do a bunch of other thing how to increase your uh, efficiency in terms of you working out and everything right so he's a superb guy when it comes to that very interesting very smart kuch log hote hain na jo bahut mushkil cheeze bahut mushkil concepts bahut mushkil tarike se samjhate hain He is one of those people who will make you understand a very complex subject or a concept very easily in very simple words. So, so I love that podcast. I like Flagrant too. It's a comedy podcast, very edgy again, politically incorrect. So, will not recommend politically uh, people who don't like politically incorrect comedy. So, yeah, those two podcasts I like. The first podcast that you rem- recommended reminded me of this another podcast that I listened to. It's called The Happiness Lab, and again, mm. it's about emotions. they treat emotions like data so anything mm. that's data you can analyze it and that's how yeah. she teaches you to look at emotions so in each episode she sits down with somebody or alone and kind of analyzes each and every emotion so yeah. it's called the happiness lab the happiness lab i think most of the interesting things lie between intersections of different fields mm-hmm. so when you combine for example literature and science this one beautiful intersection where very interesting conversations can happen there's a lot of uh, sort of scope for growth and uh, you know new concepts right. very interesting are you also into music when i listen to music i i can picture my things that i want to make things i want to create so usually right. apart from the comedy videos i make in everything i've always for the most part of my career i've made vlogs i've made tried to make films and whatever right and when i listen to music i can literally see images that i want to make so that's how important music is in my life and i never share my playlist <laughs> why i never share the music that i listen to i think it's a cult of people unko lagta hai ki agar wo music share karenge unko kya bol raha hu mere ko lagta hai wo music share karenge wo over share ho jata hai and people just it's just it's not personal anymore you know it's it's, it's like sharing one part i i do share my music with people that i really love and care about i think it's one of those personal things that you know someone needs to have a trust and respect and sort of you know this mutual uh, love so you for you to be able to share your music correct so yeah. do you end up using your most special songs for your vlogs or not no no mere ek dost hai karan chavla hum hum dono ki is pe baat hui thi yaar ki mujhe na kuch gaan gaane na jab sunta hu main i can picture a whole film i can picture a whole story i can see what i want to create but then the dilemma is that if i share that video if i share that yeah. music then it's not going to be the same people are going to take different meaning out of it and it's not going to be the same meaning that i want to give that video and i think it's a it's a it's an interesting creative struggle yeah i have faced that a lot too and uh, i keep worrying that if i end up using a particular song for a video i will never yeah. find a song good again but i always end up finding a good song jahan tak mujhe lagta hai over time you get comfortable with the song in our I yeah. treat songs like people. Once you're comfortable, you can make them meet your friends and your family. It's like dating a person. Once you're comfortable enough, then you make them meet your parents, your family, and stuff like that. So, is that your yeah. process for all your vlogs? You pick the song first, and then you decide what the video is going to look like. No. So, this the song just gives me an inspiration to for me to tell a story. I'm trying to reinvent myself as as a vlogger. I made vlogs for like three years of my life, and I was not famous at all. Then my Instagram blew up, and they took a break from my vlogs and everything. And I really want to get back to it because it gives me just this 
incredible amount of happiness that I just can't find anywhere else. But I really want to reinvent invent myself in terms of being able to tell a story and it actually making sense to people. Because pehle me ek story bata tha which made hundred percent sense to me, but I don't know how it translated. Now I want to understand how to tell a great story. I want to tell a story in three minutes, but I want to know what is the setup, what is the conflict, what is the resolution, what am I trying to achieve with that story, and what is the medium. If I'm meeting new people, because it's going to be a vlog, I am always going to be the character in that story. But how do I tell that story? One, it's one hundred percent unique to me. Two, it does justice to the idea that I want to tell that story uh, about, right? And that idea usually comes from the song. Is there also something that you're always wary of that this is something I'm not going to uh, do in my content? Yeah, of course. I think sometimes what happens is that I am done with the idea. even though that idea is serving me well and getting views and everything sometimes i am done it doesn't challenge me i'm not having fun making doing that idea any at least in that time frame right. for a month maybe i want to revisit that idea after a while you wouldn't be fair to say that you enjoy long form content more than short form content i do enjoy long form content a lot right and i did that for when i had no audience whatsoever it's more fulfilling definitely it is uh but it's also more i don't want to use that word easily but depressing for me because it's a weird challenge for me in my head it has to be a certain way right and that's one thing that i have to grow in to be okay with like you know being imperfect and not making a great video and one thing that i struggle with long form content is that i take so much time in the process of creation that i don't care about being consistent i don't care क्या कब जा रही है वीडियो विद शॉर्ट फॉर्म कंटेंट आई नो आई कैन जस्ट डू इट व्हेन एवर आई आई कैन यू नो हैव एन आईडिया आई कैन मेक मेक अ वीडियो एंड आई कैन गेट डन विद इट विद लॉन्ग फॉर्म आई जस्ट वांट टू मेक द राइट थिंग राइट एंड दैट्स एज अ क्रिएटर आई नो फॉर अ फैक्ट आई हैव टू बी ओके विद मेकिंग इंपरफेक्ट वीडियोस एंड दैट्स द ओनली वे आई एम गोना मेक गुड वीडियोस व्हाट एक्साइट्स यू द मोस्ट अबाउट द होल क्रिएशन प्रोसेस इज इट स्टोरी टेलिंग मैं आज ही बात कर रहा था इसके बारे में इट्स द सेल्फ एक्सप्लोरेशन पार्ट दो content creation i feel like people right now not just people creators and even corporations perceive it as a form of self expression to me it is a form of self exploration because content creation gives you power of self exploration like nothing else being able to do this podcast right it's a form of self exploration i am living your life through your thoughts ideas and stories right and you similarly you are living my life through my stories and my ideas now this is the purest form of self exploration right and because you will never be able to experience what i have experienced and i will never be able to experience what you have experienced we don't get to talk to people just like that we don't get to sit and write scripts and then work on them and then edit and make like that clarity of thought that comes from writing a script then shooting it then editing it that's unlike anything so content creation for me is just the purest form of self exploration with every new video i make i feel like i figure out something new about myself yeah right because you are forced to think about an idea in ways that you want more than that you are forced to articulate that idea mm-hmm. which is the most important part you know kai log kai bar na hamare dimag mein itne ideas hote hain like we have a conversation there will be some idea that will stuck the stuck in back of my head and once i sit and write about it even it's journaling whatever it is i will actually have to confront that idea i'll have to make an opinion on that idea right and that part is beautiful and content creation just gives you that power to be able to do that on a daily basis i have a question for both of you disha you as well so <laughs> all of us create content here we sit down we shoot videos and everything uh, and everyone expects the journey of a creator to be a certain way so we know there'll be certain lessons we learn along the way maybe our confidence will grow our scripts will get better etc etc but there's also uh, a certain something negative or positive that you've learned about yourself a positive thing i have come to know about myself um, while editing is that i can make something out of nothing like i'll have random scraps of videos and i'll be able to make something really crazy out of it a negative thing probably would be i have very unrealistic standards for what i want to put out so there's a lot that i've made but it never goes up i would actually just add on that because pehle do to main same copy paste karunga point i have so much footage i have recorded the last two years of my life i've even put it on a on an editor and try to make a story out of it 
but i'm like no it's not mm-hmm. worthy of a story it's not a story it's not making sense and i just don't end up putting it so it's, it's that that curse i hate one more thing that i've learned that's a negative is that i, I mean it's a positive or a negative the way you look at it is that uh, i have to pick my battles when it comes to content i have i can't do everything i can't yeah. create everything i can't also do a podcast or to create short form content also do even though i really want to even though i love talking to people even though i love all these things i can't do everything mm-hmm. so there's a time when you have to be really patient to pursue the things at the right time and it's okay you're going to you're going to be where you want to be at the right time so you walk on this thin line if you fall on this side you burn out yourself on this side you're constantly struggling with you know trying to live up to your potential but you're not able to you're only able to do this one strand of thing mm-hmm. right and as a creator you feel so restricted you feel like i'm not doing enough i'm not doing enough i'm not doing enough i want to do more and then you fall into this vicious circle of i hate myself i hate everything <laughs> about so yeah. it's a very fine line that you have to walk on at least for me absolutely yeah i feel like there are people who are able to balance things better but if given mm. the choice between being creatively constipated and burning out i would rather <laughs> burn <laughs> and i have burnt out so many times so many times it's yeah. not even funny i have made peace with the fact that i'm going to burn out and it's going to be okay after a while i have just made peace with it there's no dealing with it you don't deal with it it's like how do you deal with you know your break up you just have to you just have to be there you just have to experience the feelings that you're supposed to experience to learn from what you just did i hate the whole idea when people say that there's a bandage that will just cover your burnout you know do this and your burnout will be okay this is what you should do in a creative block no you're supposed to just experience that creative block yeah. you're supposed to live that burnout and understand what your body is capable of what your mind is capable of and you know wh- where is the limit and okay push it one step every time just push yeah. the line one step every time but you can't just be like you know what i'm going to solve this problem as a creator and never burn out and never have a creative block that's just not possible sometimes what happens is people burn out or they take breaks and the audience either gets angry or gets tired of waiting etc etc but how important does your community play a role in um, exciting you my people are super amazing i have i'm blessed with a bunch of really kind people so one is followers one the one part of it is community right mm-hmm. your followers follow you for your content your community stays with you because of who you are as a person and any creator will always sort of struggle in creating their followers like community if you have a large enough community you will be able to take that break right you'll be able to like tell them that hey i'm not doing well it's like you know if your brother comes to you and tells you that bro i'm not doing well i'm going to take off for a while i'm not going to do anything i hope that's okay like yeah of course take take care of yourself you know but if your employee comes and they're like of course if i had an employee i'd give them a break but in general in a corporation in an evil corporation uh, an employee goes to their boss and goes like hey i want to take a you know a two weeks off because i just don't feel well they're not going to give you that break so it's a similar kind of relationship uh with me i'm lucky that i've always been vulnerable even when i had 3000 followers i was just honest with the fact that listen i am pretty fucked up i cried my balls out last night so uh, you know i'm going to take this break so i think my people are really understanding because i tell them what my flaws are i sh- i'm pretty open with the fact that i'm you know not perfect do you ever worry that by the time you bounce back a lot of people won't be there i do but then uh, it's a rational conversation in my head that if i made it or like made this community out of nothing when i literally had nothing no resources whatsoever uh, i sure i can do it again secondly if people are just here for my content that's not a kind of creator i want to be if they just are here for my content and a lot of them are and that's okay i'm not judging them in any shape or form but it's just i want people who care about me i don't want just people who just care about my content i want to do a lot of things in my life i want to write a book i want to you know explore the world i want to create vlogs i want to do podcasts i want to talk to people i want to do all of these things and i want to be able to share these things with people who care about me and not just my content and stay of content what kind of things do you want because i see you uh, because i follow you on instagram and i see you doing a lot of great Thank stuff you. so you have reels and there are times when you talk about uh, mental health to your subscribers followers so what kind of content do you want to aim at eventually or like 
what kind of mixture are you looking at i'm not looking for any mixture i want to explore my life the way it is and i want to document it as i go that's all i want to do yeah. you know if i learn something new i want to be able to share it if i you know fuck up in my life if there's a funny thing happening in my life if i eat something new if there's a vada pav yeah. stall that literally is the best thing in the world i want to be yeah. able to document that and share that with the world and uh, speaking of other content creators who are your favorite creators on youtube or instagram or on other platforms instagram i don't watch a lot of content on instagram youtube i love there's this show yeah. called best ever food review show they tell really good stories around food they visit different kinds of communities and try to tell the story of the food from their perspective it's very rare then i love casey neistat one of the people that i've looked up to for the longest time one of the people who got me into the idea of storytelling then this emma chamberlain i love her so much she literally got me through some of the de- most depressive parts of my life because she was yeah. depressed as well when you see a creator just being honest on camera and just you know being able to share their flaws with such precise articulation and being able to just express their feelings so nicely and you're like you know what i feel the same how important do you think it is to take a break from consuming content as a creator it's a it's very important top 3 recommendations for a creator one is that don't consume as much content as the world offers you because then there is no room for your art there is no room for your own thoughts you know you're always being indoctrinated by some political theory some you know something or the other is happening and if that's your life that's okay you know no judgments there but like if you're a creator who wants to create something of your own you can't keep watching but uh, you know what holds me back i keep thinking how will i know what is trendy right now if i don't stay on instagram or youtube actively fair main govin se hi baat kar raha tha govin is my younger brother govin keh raha tha tu trend pe kuch kyun nahi banata hai main kaha main trend dekhta nahi hu kyunki cuz i genuinely main mere ko koi trend aata hai na it makes me I I I can't watch that because I've seen it so many times. So I I'm not interested. Dal the reason. My feed will be not coming. No trend. Thankfully, I'm in a place where I don't need to, you know, create trendy videos. I just create what I want to create, and people appreciate me for that. But for a creator who's starting out, it is important to sort of do your version of your trend. Like a lot of my friends ask me that, "Hey, what should I do in the trend? What should I do? What should I not do?" Should I, should I always tell them that do it, but do it your version that no one else can find anywhere else. If I do any trend, it's a trend that I know is unique to me. No one else is doing it my way. That's the only way I do trends. Trends do help because people are used to seeing that those kind of videos. People have already have a certain sort of affinity or repulsiveness towards a trend. And what are your favorite platforms in any case to consume content? I love YouTube. YouTube is my favorite for sure. Twitter, I hate. uh <laughs> pinterest i love pinterest how does pinterest uh, feed usually look like how does like right now it's just clothes a lot of clothes then a lot of <laughs> designs and typography because i design and i uh yeah. um, building my merchandising company yeah, congratulations so, on that by thank the way thank you so much thank you so much i was thinking that i should wear it uh, wear the t-shirt the new collection that is coming us ki t-shirt and i'm like no If you want, we can my, give you some time to go. <laughs> yeah. My team will be really mad at me. They're like, "Hum itte dinon se hum plan kar rahe hain launch camping kaisa karna hai aur tum ye sab kar rahe ho aaj." You went ahead and you did it on time. <laughs> yeah. So I like okay. I love designing and typography a lot. Uh, I think it's one thing that gives me a lot of peace for some reason. Designing is just another way to express yourself, which is just not possible any other way. I don't find it any other. Way. The only way I I feel it comes is past me is vlog vlogs me. Because वहाँ पर भी तुम design डाल सकते हो, you can, you know, play with text, you can play with lighting, you can play play with colors. We were doing this episode with Ankur Variku a few days ago, and uh, he told how important it is to journal, especially with a pen and paper. Like when you type, your thoughts are already racing, and the typing speed is comparatively faster. So already you have so many thoughts, and mm. immediately आते जाते हैं, but there's no pause. When you're writing it with your hand, you have to be really sure of what you write. in that sense like subconsciously kaatne ka man nahi karta hai like you, when you write you want to be able to write something that you really mean you know when you type you can just always backspace and like rego so you are you are being your critic while you are being creative as well you can't be a creative and a critic at the same time like to talk way. about the vision behind your merch yes that's very interesting i've always dreamt of having a merch like my merch i have like chote hote i would go see jasreen and superwoman they doing their merch and i'm like hey i'll do it one day 
and then eighth class may even tried i made this page on facebook where we would try to customize t-shirts for people who wanted them and stuff like that very yeah. stupid startup whatever uh but uh never sold one t-shirt but like that was the idea and i've always wanted to do that so finally i had the resources i knew what i was doing i knew a little bit of design and everything so i was like yeah i want to do it and i really wanted my community to be able to recognize each other when they see each other my intent is to create a community of people uh, who are kind compassionate and curious so these are three values that i always associate with the brand whoever wears that merch and if someone sees the other person across the room or in a you know market and they like oh this person is kind compassionate curious and i can talk to that person and i can you know maybe be friends with them i think this is something that really binds us also because at chalchitra we really care about our community one can talk about whatever they want to doesn't matter what you read what movies you like to watch and that's very important i think sometimes internet becomes the place where you you don't know if you can share your thought you know internet pe you know there's no space to be wrong right you want to you have to say the right thing uh, whereas i want to create a sense of community gives you that space of being wrong with your opinions you know right. even wrong opinions deserve to be heard right because if there's no dialogue and conversation there is no growth you want to be around people who can you know really hash it out with dialogue and not with violence and that happens only if you are heard and if your wrong opinions are heard and right and wrong in itself is so subjective yeah. uh, so it's a very complex world and we can't just simplify it with you know who your opinion is right and wrong i'm very curious how is do you go about your community building and how is your community like people who really really like us contribute to us each month and they are added to the whatsapp groups where every one can talk to each other so it's kind of like minded people exchanging their thoughts and views about art i think we try our best to not politicize anything because mm. that really creates differences i think in a way and we've also been very transparent with our community it kind of always helps because you attract a similar tribe yeah. and yeah. we have that There's never been this fear that oh if I do this perhaps they'll cancel me or they'll hate me. There's always mm. good feedback, constructive feedback, and you also have to be open to that. And I think that's mm. the beauty of create of creators and people like you creating a community where the premise is that okay let's let's sit and talk about it. Let's see what happens. You know let's yeah. let's try to get along. I wanted to know um, how important it is for you that your community accepts what you're creating, especially the inner circle. my inner community is not just there for my content they're right. there to see me grow as a human right i won't always do the kind of comedy that i do right now you know one day i want to write my own show i want to learn screenplay writing and i want to write a proper show that's never been made in india and i know for a fact like at least my inner circle people they're always be cheering for me no matter what i do even if i'm like hey i want to study and i'm going to take a break from content and they'll be like yeah man i will just uh, stay in touch we'll keep in touch and they'll be happy for me and i think that's uh, that's more than i can ask for this is a very selfish uh, selfish question does it ever happen to you that you really put in a lot of efforts into one video and that really doesn't work as you had expected yeah yeah a lot deal with that i don't really think about it because i i don't I, it's been a while that i've created content because uh you know i wanted a certain kind of reaction from people i did used to do that a lot but now i i create content that i want to create i hope that people like it but if they don't i did it for myself anyway i will of course let a lot of people down in terms of what they want to watch but that's a trade off that i want to make to live a happy life right i don't want 5 million followers who love me for my content i want 500000 followers who you know love me for who i am and my struggles and everything i also want to ask you this question this is something i ask everyone so there's this woman called maria popova and she runs this uh, blog that used to be called brain pickings she talks about having pockets of stillness having things mm. that you can turn to when things are not going wrong when you're feeling overwhelmed so it could be a place it could be a person it could be something you do it could be a routine what what are your pockets of stillness uh, my values for example one of my key values is freedom and curiosity two of my very core values are uh, freedom and curiosity now i know for a fact whenever i meet someone 
I love talking to. I am happy. I am genuinely happy. I don't want to be doing anything else until talk to that person and see what I have to learn from them and you know just have a conversation. For example, this conversation. I would not be doing anything else. I would not be making a video. I'm having a good time. Now these values, once you identify them, you you can really uh, sort of realign yourself when you have a decision to make or when you're in something. You know, when you're questioning yourself, if you did the right thing or the wrong thing. Hey, it aligns with my values, though. You know, I did it because of these reasons. And when it doesn't, you're like, no, I did it because I was trying to impress someone. I did it because I was, you know, not being authentic. One last question from my end. So this is a book called Tools of Titans by Tim Ferriss. There's this question he asks his guests, like, what is your favorite failure? What has been your most uh, beloved failure, if there has been one? I failed through my life. I'm not even kidding. I have failed through my life. I always say this: I am the most above average, underachieving kid that I know of, which means that I've always been the third best or the fourth best person at everything. Failed to get the school I wanted to get in after ten. I failed to get the college that I wanted when I passed twelve, right? And all of them by a margin, by like this margin. And then I went somewhere and I did not want to go. Right? and that it has been the case always in my life and i am so grateful to those failures because my life would have been so different right now i'm not even kidding if i got into that college into that engineering college that i wanted to go into i wouldn't have been a content creator and there's nothing worse i can think about just before we go how's your relationship with food my relationship with food is great we have free time <laughs> we uh, yeah. we just love each other so much do you have any recommendations in terms of restaurants oh my god yes i have so many recommendations <laughs> so many city batao which city i am not i have let's start with chandigarh cuz i am in mean, dire need of recommendations over here so uh, if you want to order like paneer or or chicken order from babas i talk about babas in every stream possible <laughs> so i think unka butter paneer they've nailed it there's nothing yeah. like it just so good so good theek hai yeah pizza You want to have the best pizza that you have, not just in Chandigarh, in your entire life, in the whole world. I am not overselling it. Okay, it's the best ever thing that you will ever eat. It's in oven fresh. There's a pizza called Peri Peri Chicken Pizza with marinara sauce. You will die. You will die. You want to eat like burgers and everything, and like wings, chilies is really nice. I think ye to obviously ye Chandigarh ka. You want to eat great food in Bombay. Go to Tangerine Tiffin House. Oh my god! Oh, okay. It's so good. I wanna cry. I will cry. It's so good. So, वहाँ पर ना एक platter भी ना वो देते हैं. अलग-अलग वो देते हैं. Curries that you can have them cooked in chicken, prawns, whatever you want. Okay. Hmm. So they give you a bunch of options. And मेरे को याद नहीं आ रहा मेरी favorite कौन सी. But when I see it, I know which one it is. मुझे color से याद है. Then uh, there's this Yazu. Yazu uh, Kitchen, which is Pan Asian. मैंने अभी स्ट्रीट फूड नहीं खाया है मुझे स्ट्रीट फूड रेकमेंडेशन चाहिए बॉम्बे में आई वांट टू जस्ट डू स्ट्रीट फूड जस्ट स्ट्रीट फूड इज देयर एनी स्ट्रीट यू डू लाइक पावभाजी मैंने पावभाजी अच्छी पावभाजी नहीं खाई है वहां पे ओ ओ एल्को एल्को है ना उसका नाम एल्को वहां पर वो मिलता है गोल गप्पे यू गाइस कॉल इट पानी पूरी हां हां इट्स कॉल्ड गोल गप्पे लेट्स लेट्स कॉल इट व्हाट इट इज सो वी कॉल इट पानी पूरी या इट्स नॉट पानी पूरी इट्स गोल गप्पे सो आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू ट्राई टू डिफाइन माइसेल्फ देयर आर टू पीपल सिटिंग हियर फ्रॉम चंडीगढ़ सो Oh my God! वहाँ के that pani puri is really good. Good, yeah. Very, but the pav bhaji there is horrible. Yeah, वहाँ की अच्छी नहीं है. There's this place called um, Canon. Hmm. बहुत अच्छी pav bhaji मिलती है. Oh, this is place called Sifa. Oh uh, yes, yes. For Thai, very good. You were saying something, Mani? I was actually I can't remember. I was going to. I'm not sure. I can't. ज़्यादा passionate हो गए खाने के बारे में. I know, even I'm distracted. I just got back from Kolkata and I had the best food there. my first ever girlfriend who mm. blessed me by dating me uh she was from calcutta and she would like tell me like how great the food is there and how great everything is there i'm like yeah theek hai main kabhi gaya hi nahi yaar but i've literally <laughs> i haven't great. traveled anywhere the next year this is travel for me i'm just going to travel that's all i'm going to do this is the last year of work and i'm going to just travel i'm going to go vietnam for sure because i i, I love vietnamese food uh and i want to like travel across india and i want to go to bangalore i want to go to calcutta even goa yaar even goa i haven't main south goa nahi gaya when i haven't been 
अंदर को आके लाइक बीचेस वगैरह कुछ नहीं होता यार वही चीजें हैं दम दम करते रहते हैं पागलों की तरह वही है बस एवरीवन गोस्ट टू दैट ग्रीक व्हाट व्हाट रेस्टोरेंट इज इट कॉल्ड हाँ मैं भी गया हूँ एक बार वो वहाँ पे बहुत सामने समुंदर है कुछ नहीं है वो कुछ नहीं है वो <laughs> मजाक है वो मजाक नहीं कर रहा स्क्रीन से लगा लो तुम अपने लैपटॉप को बीच ही है यार <laughs> one of the things that i have come to admire the most about you through this conversation is that i realize that you don't box yourself at all mm. and you don't limit yourself uh, to any one thing how do you go about that because i think that is yeah. something i struggle with a lot and it's a very uh, easy trap to fall into before i blew up i had this conversation with this guy who told me that if you want to succeed on internet you have to pick a niche mm. before that i was creating i had a podcast I used to vlog I uh, literally did everything, everything. I did, did for, short form content. I did comedy sketches. I did everything, right? Because I in, genuinely enjoyed everything. He told me pick a niche. I'm like, no, that's not me. I can't do it because then I won't be happy. Then what's the point of pursuing my passion if I'm not happy, right? And uh, I did not do it, and I blew up. And my family and I were we were going through financial distress and everything. So uh, it made sense for me to. Double down on short form content creation and make sure that you know we're okay and everything. So I did that, and now we're okay. And now I'm like, okay, now I can do whatever the fuck I want to do. So again, I come back to my values, and if those values are like sort of checked, then I go for it. I did this series with Cred, uh, which was a talk to camera piece where I was, uh, you know, explaining different kinds of things, NFTs, sneaker market, and all these things for the YouTube channel. And I was really afraid because I had never ever in my life done anything like it. I've never talked. in front of people in front of proper cameras and lighting right mm-hmm. so i did that and i felt i felt so good jab game khel rahe hote hain to fir ek level up hi ho jata hai tumhari character again you're like yeah dude mm-hmm. <laughs> very cool then i did an acting gig i did a tv show a web series uh, for lionscape i have never done acting in anything and i'm like i can't do this this is very scary and they were like you know i've we've seen your videos you can act we know what acting is so you can do it I'm like no, I can't. <laughs> Do you understand? I've just done it in front of my camera and then with my brother, no, with no one else, and I'm very socially awkward. But I, then I was like, you know what? This makes me uncomfortable. This is something I'm good at, and I'm curious if this is something that will give me as much happiness, as much sort of sense of self worth uh, as I did when I did that great thing. So I did it, and I should you not? It was one of the best experiences of my life. And I was like. Yes, I want to chase these feelings. I want to make sure that whenever I'm curious about something, I do that. I was talking with one of my friends, uh, Deepak Ramola, which I just referenced at the starting of this conversation. I told him that I w- I've always wanted to write a book, right? And I have so many thoughts, and I just want to pen them down and everything. So we were talking about like what things to write about and all those things. Then I said something which was very normal to me, but he's like, "Yeah, this." And he has written books. He's an author. So he's one of those people you can just. Take your dump of ideas, and you can dump on him, and he'll be like, you know, this is a good idea, and you should pursue this. One of those things that I said, like, uh, it's very important. What I do in this situation is I invite courage, uh, and that sort of became the core of one of the things that I'm writing right now. To invite courage when you need it, because everything comes to you: happiness, sadness, uh, you know, anxiety, fear. Every other feeling will come to you. Courage is the only one that you have to invite. You know when you talk to yourself in your head, you know, like uh, I don't know if I can do this. You know what? You can. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Let's do it. That is you inviting courage, right? So whenever I feel like I have to invite courage to do something, and if I'm curious enough to do something, then I just go for it. I just do it and see where it takes me. And learning happens on the way. This is the first time I'm talking about these things, and I haven't even shared it with my community. I'm like, oh. तुम्हारे साथ कर लेता हूँ तुम्हारी ऑडियंस को पता होना चाहिए सब बातें मेरे बारे में इवेंचुअली आई थिंक योर ऑडियंस विल आल्सो कम हियर सो या आई होप या होपफुली लर्निंग ऑलवेज हैपेंस ऑन द वे सो माय मेजर ऑफ इफ आई वांट टू डू समथिंग और नॉट इज नेवर इफ आई ऑलरेडी नो हाउ टू डू इट आई हैव लर्न दैट इट्स वन ऑफ द स्टूपिडेस्ट वेज ऑफ दैट यू विल रिस्ट्रिक्ट योरसेल्फ फ्रॉम एक्सपीरियंसिंग व्हाट वर्ल्ड हैज टू ऑफर इट्स डजंट मैटर इफ यू डोंट नो हाउ टू डू अ स्टार्टअप इट डजंट मैटर इफ यू डोंट नो अबाउट क्लोथिंग इफ यू डोंट नो अबाउट थिंग्स learning is the easy part you can always learn while you're doing thing the hard part is to committing to it the hard part is to you know being curious enough to learn it that is the hard part learning it is not the hard part so for me it was acting starting a business clothing there are certain things that make everyone conscious even after i believe 
10 years into this business of creating there will still be things that will make you conscious how do you deal with them one part of it is being making peace with the fact that you're conscious of those things you don't always have to change i think the worst things happen when someone calls you out on something that you were like oh i didn't know that people knew about the fact that i'm conscious about these things the people see those flaws that i see in myself Right? right but when i when i've made peace with that i can joke about those things when i can joke about it mm-hmm. i know for a fact i'm at peace yeah i'll be conscious about it sometimes in little moments i'll find myself sort of making sure that i'm looking okay and everything but that's okay that's part of being a human i don't want to be a robot being like i don't have any insecurities i'm not conscious about stuff i think after 9 pm i talk a lot that's what i've realized through this conversation <laughs> i think we should invite him for a stream yeah we should definitely do a stream together For sure, uh, I love having this conversation. I love having conversations. And we'll ensure the stream is after nine pm. Yeah. Oh no, no. <laughs> so your audience is like, "Yeah, it's not that new, right?" <laughs> But I'm pretty certain it'll be. But then even fun. we can be open and honest. Yeah, it can be a pretty But, laid back stream. Yeah, actually, I would love to ask you more questions. I think in most of the conversations, I am rarely the one answering questions. I'm always the one asking questions. Mm-hmm. So I think I'll I'm uh, it's going to be fun. Great. But thank you yeah. so much Vishnu for doing this. And thank you uh, so much for inviting me. Everyone who loves me and admires me and is just basically in love with me because of how amazing I am clearly. I think you should what you should definitely do is just subscribe hit the subscribe button and just like this video because you know that's the right thing to do. I am saying it and I'm an influencer if you know what that means. I am influencing you right now. Do it.